Thousands of New York's finest showing up in force to pay their respects at the funeral for fallen NYPD officer Jonathan Diller. The widow of the hero cop delivering a devastating eulogy aimed at leaders who allowed the liberal bail laws. How many more police officers and how many more families need to make the ultimate sacrifice before we start protecting them? It's been two years and two months since Detective Rivera and Detective Mora made the ultimate sacrifice just like my husband, Jonathan Diller. Dominique Rivera stood in front of all the elected officials present today pleading for change. That change never came. Detective Diller was fatally shot by a pair of career criminals with dozens of priors between them. One of the dirtbags was in court earlier and held without bail. Governor Kathy Hochul says she understands why everyone's mad, and yet she refuses to step up and change the laws. I went to, to the wake to meet the family and speak to everyone. There's a lot of anger. Understandably, there's anger about how these individuals who commit crimes over and over are back out on the streets again. So Kathy could go to Albany and just make this a huge push over the next legislative session, but she doesn't do it. Why? Uh, she doesn't do it because she cut a deal with AOC and the Working Families Party right before the last election to make sure that she would stay in power and she is doing everything she can to maintain that. Now, I used to work in the legislature. It doesn't take much to get a bill in the New York legislature to get a bill and get someone from the other side, especially in this climate. Mm -hmm. But you've got Heasty, who's not going to go for it, You've got her, uh, a, a Hochul, who isn't willing to put any political capital behind it. Make no mistake, we are the only state that doesn't have, uh, doesn't give a judge discretion for dangerousness. The reason those guys shot and killed, well, one of them did, okay? Rivera did, uh, the other guy was driving the car. They both were career criminals. Had they been caught with those guns, they would have gone to prison for life. So there was no risk to them shooting Officer Jonathan Diller. Mm. And that's on Hochul. Without a doubt, it's on Hochul. They should not have been out. If bail had been properly imposed, if parole had not been early release, then these two would have been in jail where they belong, and, and Adila would be alive, and she has the blood on her hands. Don't let her sweet talk you. Don't let her, you know, do a two-step. It's all in her hands. And she wasn't welcome at the wake, Harold. So I disagree with you there, Judge. I don't think all the blood is on her hands. I think it's a terrible... Terrible. I understand your passion. I'm as passionate as you. I believe I have to share your passion about, about this issue. Um, I thought that I, my family's in the funeral home business, and when you are grieving a loved one, you really want and welcome any and everyone to come, uh, but families have every right to say they don't want someone at a funeral. I do hope that not only that the governor, but that even the speaker of the General Assembly and other leaders there in Albany I hope this is a catalyst. It, 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 it should be there. We've, we've talked about so many murders. We've talked about so many heinous crimes that should be catalysts uh, for, for government to act differently. There's no doubt this does rest in Albany, and that, that I agree with you 100 percent on, Judge. And if we want these laws to change, they have to change in state capitals. Most states, that's where it happens. So then you admit it's her fault. No, Why no, isn't she making a judge, move for that? No, judge, I just don't personalize it. Like, I think it's Albany. But you have to personalize so can it. Can I finish? It, that's the problem. What I'm saying is Albany should do this. And the governor needs to be where she, I think she could be more adamant about it. But I, would, I just don't put the blood on her hands. I put the blood on a political system's hands that's not acting. And I think what that widow said if you didn't hear that as a politician, as a citizen, as an advocate, as someone who cares and doesn't act, something's wrong with you. Then you're hoping that the sensitivity, they'll, they'll feel, oh, because she's feeling bad, I'm going to change the law. She said two cops were killed two years ago. Nothing changed. I just celebrate Easter, so I believe in the power of forgiveness. Oh, yeah, gosh. well, I don't forgive her. I thought Pitt. it was bizarre that, um, well, and unfortunate that Kathy Hochul knew she wasn't invited to the wake and she went anyway. It would be one thing to, be, to, to have not been told you weren't welcome and to go and then not be welcome, but she knew she wouldn't be, but she went anyway. When the action that she could take, if she was bold enough to do so, is uh, invite Alvin Bragg to Albany and say, you're fired. And that would be bold, courageous. It might hurt her standing with AOC, but look at what happened with Lee Zeldin because of these very issues, getting very close to at least making that a competitive race uh, in a state as blue as New York. Greg. I wonder how many wakes are caused by the woke.
Mm -hmm. Just came up with that. Look, I seem to remember it was Kathy Hochul who said, if you're complaining about crime, leave New York. Mm -hmm. Didn't she say that before yeah. the election? Get out. You know, so is it any surprise that the, at a gathering of people who champion law and order, she's not going to find that many friends there? It, it would be like me. It, it would be like, I don't know, me showing up at Jesse's birthday. <laughs> uh, her, her rage and the rage of people on the right are not political because it just so happens that it's pointed at a politician. She saw the, the widow saw the problem and no one, including Hochul, listened. We talk about this, as, as we've all mentioned, many times for many years. And we were mocked by other networks. We don't, we don't want to do these segments. You know, we would love to do segments on the world is safer and that here's another example of good triumphing evil and stuff. But we can't. But you can't blame us for that. That's on the left, the woke, the media, the activists who brought this hellscape upon us. You know, that we, all, we're, just, we're just not living in denial. And I think anybody who keeps talking about the, how crime's getting better are living in denial. You know, when an officer is murdered, the media will play it down. Uh, and they will accuse the people who are outraged as pouncing. In fact, the New York Times did that, mm -hmm. right? And yet, that is the same side that would amplify problematic police interactions to make the public believe that police are killing thousands of blacks when there would be 11 cases in a year that would, that would come up. Uh, that led to destructions of cities, decimation of the police forces and morale. And now they made it, what the result is what you're seeing is the Ferguson effect is now the law of the land. Protect and serve is now quit or retire. And it all goes back to that. All right, well said. Thank you. You're welcome. And I, you're I not welcome you at my I birthday party. party. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.